What's up Bertini fam now in today's video we're going to be replacing out this factory intercooler with this beautiful massive one from MMR. The other thing I'm going to be taking the opportunity to do is to replace this from bumper piece right here because as many of you already know from previous videos this one has two holes in it where there was a license plate here. I live in Florida and so I don't need that and so I bought a brand new version of this and I've been holding on to it now for some time waiting for the opportunity where I was going to remove my front bumper. This way I can kill two birds with one stone. With that being said if you have not yet joined the Bertini family go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. Join the Bertini family. Stay up to date on all my content. Get in on all my build series videos and don't forget to click that notification bell this way you get notified every single time I put out a new video. Video. With all the formalities out of the way, go ahead and roll the intro. Now let me just tell you the quality of the finish on this thing is super, super, super nice. All the welding on this thing is done to absolute perfection. You could tell a lot of time money and effort and R&D went into building this intercooler. Speaking of that, the biggest reason why I chose to go with MMR for my front intercooler setup, besides the fact that it is absolutely, look at this, this thing is so super beefy. That's what she said. Oh my God, what am I saying? But aside from that fact, this intercooler has channeling vents to help channel air back into the intercooler. Now obviously this is not gonna help at a standstill, but as you're racing, this will matter. This is kind of like adding venting back to your brakes. It helps channel the air back into the intercooler, which helps with cooling performance. And by the way, for those of you who don't know of MMR, they like super engineer all of their parts. All of their parts are tested on racetracks. These things are beat to absolute shit before they'll go ahead and sell you a product. So for me, that's a big deal because if they're racing with these parts, if these parts are like super, super track tested and abused, then obviously they're gonna be great on my mini. Let me go ahead and flip this and show you the back here. Yeah, so look at the details on this thing. This is just nice. It is beautiful. It came really well packaged from Europe. And look at the quality. I mean, the quality on this thing is just nice and it's super Super next level, really digging it. Now, black isn't my first choice in intercooler options. Unfortunately, these days, that's pretty much how everybody makes intercoolers is in black. They put this special coating on them. Um, pretty much every brand that I was looking at getting an intercooler from has this coating on there now. I guess it does help with cooling. It's just for me, I come from the JDM world, especially like old school Fast and the Furious kind of guy. That's the era I grew up in. And so for me, having like a really shiny front polished, you know, intercooler is like the thing. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this thing on a scale because I am curious to see how much this thing weighs in comparison to the stock one. Now, before I go ahead and put this thing on the scale, one thing I do want to call out is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest weaknesses on the Mini Cooper F56. I think any Mini Cooper platform, but I know on the F56 JCW platforms that people love to tune and build up boost or just even keeping it in its factory state, one of the biggest problems is the intercooler. Heat soak is a big thing on these vehicles. And so many tuners all around the world will tell you the number one thing that you should switch out immediately on your Mini Cooper is a front mount intercooler. So regardless of what this thing weighs, it is a must have on these vehicles especially if you're planning on upping boost, especially if you're planning on tuning this thing, you need to have an intercooler. One thing I'd highly recommend if you have not seen the charge pipe video on this as well, MMR makes some kick ass charge pipes. They also include um, in one of their charge pipes, it has the ability to literally um, put in water or methanol injection super, super easily. So I'd highly recommend if you're planning on upping your boost as well, go ahead and check out that video too. All right, now let's see in terms of weight, what we're dealing with here. Okay, so 25.6 pounds is the weight of the intercooler and we'll go ahead and weigh up the factory one once we get it off. All right, so now that I got the front bumper off and I wanna replace this center bumper, I have the brand new one right here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna quickly pop this one out. 
on the back with the clips and then go ahead and pop this one in. All right, so finally got this intercooler out. Let me tell you something. This is the biggest, biggest, biggest pain in the ass of a modification. If you do not have a lot of tools like I do, if you are not mechanically inclined, you're probably not going to want to do this from your house. Or if you're super patient like me, then you should be perfectly fine. But uh, this is definitely not an easy modification if you don't have the right tools and if you're not patient this will take some time but anyways let's go ahead and get this weight up by the way if you're wondering the hardest part about this which you are going to have to loosen up the top screws here the top screws over there this way it has some flex so you can push up the radiator enough um, to get it out but it's definitely a bit tricky to wiggle this thing out well let's go ahead and get it on the scale and compare it to the MMR performance intercooler. First off, let's go ahead and measure the thickness of each of the cores. So the factory thickness on this core is 111.58 millimeters. And the one from MMR is 143.39 millimeters in thickness. So significant difference in thickness, as you can see here. They're nice. I really like this. Now let's go ahead and weigh it up. Now in terms of the weight of the factory intercooler, let's see here. So it weighed in at 10 pounds even. So by switching to the MMR intercooler, we're adding about 10, or sorry, we're adding about 13 to what, 15 pounds, but we're significantly increasing our cooling performance, which is so much more important on a turbo car. Okay, so I got everything buttoned back up onto the Mini Cooper. The inner cooler looks super sick. It looks stealth as heck, which I dig. I will say putting it back on was much, much, much easier than taking off the factory inner cooler. Like it wasn't even a comparison. Putting it back in and fitting it back all up the way you're supposed to probably took me like two, three minutes. Taking the stock inner cooler off probably took like 25, 30 minutes. And that literally means just prying and moving the intercooler out of the way. That's how difficult the stock intercooler is to take off. It's just, I don't know why they designed it that way, but it really is a pain. This one from MMR is so much easier to put on, it's ridiculous. Anyways, let me go ahead and get the front bumper back on and let's go ahead and take the vehicle out for a spin. So adding the front mount intercooler from MMR Performance really gives the Mini Cooper a much more aggressive look from the front for sure because I don't know if it's because it doesn't have the silver grills anymore or because it looks like it actually has a much bigger intercooler. As you can see here, you can see it down here, but you can also see it through this side as well. So it definitely gives a much, much more aggressive appearance. Plus you can see it here through the side. So you definitely know that there's something going on here. Now, I know some of you might want to put a stencil on here, like an MMR stencil and like spray paint in a white, just so everybody knows that you actually have a front mount intercooler on your Mini Cooper. But for me personally, I like the look of this. I, I prefer that all blacked out look. If I'm gonna have a black intercooler, I would prefer it to be all blacked out and not have a stencil on it. But look, to each their own, some people want everybody to know that they have a big front mount intercooler on from a distance and therefore they would stencil out whoever the manufacturer is who makes them intercooler. But yeah, it came out super nice. It looks super, super beefy and super aggressive. So from just a looks perspective alone, it obviously looks good. And two, you have a lot more cooling surface now. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna let the Mini Cooper warm up here a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and do some pulls and see if we notice any sort of performance difference from having the big front mount intercooler from MMR Performance. For those of you who are curious about the air channels and how they fit behind the intercooler, they fit absolutely perfectly, which basically means that as the air funnels in through 
this duct, it gets funneled into the intercooler as you can see here. So that pairs very well with this. So any air that's passing through here will then get funneled right into the intercooler. Very smart, very innovative design from MMR Performance. So just for the record, right now I have the Mini Cooper in mid mode, normal mode. I just wanna see first if I notice any sort of performance increase in this mode. I know from installing in the previous video and in other videos, um, the intercooler piping, so the charge pipes, I noticed an increase increase as well more significantly in the sport mode so first I want to see how this feels in mid mode and normal mode mid normal mode so something I am noticing so far even in the normal mode is that it feels a lot more smoother it's not as harsh when I give it gas the other thing I'm noticing is it feels a little bit easier to get on the power okay let me slow down here just a little bit and I'll floor it from 40 see if we notice any form of a difference so this is normal mode in 40 miles at 40 miles an hour other than a bunch of torque steer um, it sounds much better but in normal mode I can't honestly say that I actually noticed a difference in performance um, I mean, the torque steer is what the torque steer is. Uh, but yeah, in terms of a performance increase in normal mode, at least my butt dyno doesn't actually notice any form of a difference there. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it into sport mode, and then we'll go ahead and see if there's any big of a difference in sport mode. Something I do feel a lot safer doing now than I did before is pushing the car multiple times. So pushing my Mini Cooper JCW multiple times. And the reason why I feel a lot more comfortable doing that now is because of a thing called heat soak. And on any turbo vehicle, when you constantly push your turbo vehicle, you do a lot of pulls, you push it a lot over and over and over again multiple times, what ends up happening is all the heat builds up and you end up losing performance. So you end up robbing yourself of horsepower and torque. Something that a big front mount intercooler helps with is cooling down the system, thus increasing your performance. So now my Mini Cooper is basically a lot safer to push multiple times without me having to worry about something breaking due to a bunch of overheating. Or at least in theory, that's how it works. Let's go ahead and do a pull here in sport mode and see if we notice any difference in performance. definite increase in performance in the sport mode I don't know what it is it's something about and I'm sure some of you probably know how these mini Coopers work a lot better than me and you understand the engineering behind how they work a lot better than me but something about the performance mode where you really notice the increases in all these performance mods I'm sure there's something really technical happening with the ECU that adds I don't know if it's more fuel or more exhaust or whatever it is when it recognizes that there's something like, you know, a new performance part added, but it really does make a difference. What I'm really interested in knowing though now is when I tune this thing, what kind of increase in power we're actually gonna see after tuning this thing. With all the mods that we've done now, we should probably see some really nice numbers. And I've still been debating either doing a DCAT downpipe or a CATED downpipe. I'm not sure I want something that's super overly obnoxiously loud. And so I'm still kind of battling that out and trying to figure out if that's something I really want to go with or if I want to just do something like a sport cat and keep it a little bit more tame sounding. And I've also still been debating whether I want to do a full custom exhaust system or I want to go ahead and buy something that's more off the shelf. Something really high end, but something a lot more off the shelf. Do one of those exhaust systems that give you the remote control where you can like make it quieter if you want, more tame or you can go like balls to the wall and open it up and it just sounds like a freaking monster. That like split personality kind of thing. But back on the note of getting a big front mount intercooler, I would highly recommend it something that you do. This is a definite mod, especially if you're planning on tuning this thing and upping the boost pressure or tuning just in general, any 
tuner is probably gonna tell you the first mod you should do on these Mini Coopers is a front mount intercooler. Now, if you're interested in purchasing the same one that I have on my Mini Cooper that I installed in this video, go ahead and check out the links in the description box below. Use code Bertini. This way you can save yourself a bunch of money on this intercooler. And it's pretty much the same like in all my videos. You can always find links to the products, all of the products I installed in that video in the description box below. With that being said, make sure you're putting good energy out there into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now. That is not like my 1200 horsepower truck. Oh, that was fun. That is uh, that is quality performance. That is usable performance. Oh, I love this car. But I can't stand this harsh, sunny Central Florida lighting.